What's going on, guys? It's time to continue the end of season series, counting up to the best players on the 2022 Seattle Seahawks. Today, we are going to do number seven, and we're going to do a very controversial player today. There are many Seahawks fans that voraciously defend this guy, and there are some Seahawks fans who are kind of sick of him. And then there are guys who are kind of in the middle of all that, too. But this guy, relatively polarizing. And I'm going to put him on this list because I don't think you can deny what he did for the team in 2022. I think there are going to be some people who dispute this ranking, though, and believe that it's a little too high. There might be some people who think it's a little too low, but this guy and what he did in 2022, I think, has become something of a line in the sand for Seahawks fans, where we're just going to keep fighting about this guy, and it's not going to stop until he stops being a Seahawk. But you look at what he did... In 2022, I think his number seven ranking is valid. So here we go with ranking number seven. Number seven on my list is going to be DK Metcalf. And this is a Seahawk that I know a lot of people love. I know a lot of fans really embrace. But there's definitely been a little bit of an anti-Metcalf movement within the fan base in, I would say, the last couple of years. And... I don't really know where it comes from other than his occasional outbursts of emotion that I think are a little overstated in their actual impact on this team. But regardless, DK Metcalf is my number seven player. If you take a look at his performance this year, it kind of makes sense why. We moved him from an offense that catered to his skill set in 2019 and 2020 to an offense that really didn't in 2021 and now this current year 2022 he is a deep threat that is probably the best part of his game his ability to use his speed and frame to run deep down the field and go get balls in this offense you're not seeing that as much which is why in 2022 dk metcalf set a new career high in targets and receptions but didn't even come close to setting a career high in receiving yards you can see that in 2020, he had almost 16 yards per catch. This year, he had less than 12. So you can see how the way in which Metcalf is playing is changing. And that's definitely going to make for less highlight reel plays. In this case, we can see it meant less touchdowns. And I think that starts to maybe, maybe get people to start to perceive him as being not as good as he previously was. But I think there are some advanced numbers that bear out the value of a DK Metcalf beyond just these numbers. But before I get to that, let's highlight a couple things here. DK Metcalf played in every single game this year. He played and started in all 17 games plus the playoff game, despite coming down with what we feared was a serious injury midseason. Remember that injury against the Chargers that actually pulled him out of that game? Yeah, he didn't miss any games because of that. So, despite suffering a significant injury that I think would have kept a lot of players out for at least a week, DK Metcalf did not miss a game. And you can't say at any point that injury was making him a significantly worse player, I don't think. Maybe a little bit. But he toughed it out, he played through it, and at the end of the day, he did have a thousand yard season. He had his first ever 90 reception season, and... Him and Lockett made one of the best receiver duos in the league. Now, some people are going to say that a 1,000-yard season is not that big of a deal anymore. We have 17 games, and this offense is relatively pass-happy. And while it's true that a 1,000 yards is not what it used to be in a season, I think that it also needs to be pointed out that we run an offense where we don't use receivers as much as a lot of other teams, and we use tight ends a lot more. In fact, I think we were close to the league lead in tight end usage. It's going to be harder for a receiver to put up monster numbers like, say, a Justin Jefferson when we have so many games where we're spamming tight ends. And that's a good thing, I think. That's a positive thing. I don't need DK Metcalf to put up 1,800-yard seasons to know how valuable he is. And speaking of that, while we're here, let's talk about how much he gets double teamed when he runs nine routes. Free safety's constantly rolling to his side when he's on the field. Constantly terrified of DK Metcalf burning them deep. So, 
even though DK is not catching as many deep balls as he used to, when he runs deep, teams are afraid of that and they react appropriately. I look at that and I go, yeah, that is value as a football player. Now, one of the criticisms of Metcalf this year has been there have been some games where he just didn't really show up. There are, you, you can look at this list of game logs right here, and you can definitely find some games where he was quiet. <gasps> Excuse me. Um, the, the big one was, of course, in week 17, only having one catch on five targets against Sauce Gardner. The next week, Ramsey kind of locked him up. He had three catches on eight targets. There are a couple other games in here as well. You can find the Chargers game I don't care about because he got hurt pretty quickly in that one. But you had things like the Cardinals, two catches for 34 yards. Uh, Niners, week two, four catches for 35 yards. There are games where Metcalf just isn't as effective. That is fair to say. But at the end of the day, that's what separates him from the best receivers in the league, like Justin Jefferson. Yes, he's not as good as those guys. But what we have is a pretty phenomenal player here. And I think people need to keep some things in mind when they're evaluating what Metcalf is as a player. He will probably never be as good as like a Justin Jefferson. And if he could be, I don't think it's going to happen on this team in this offense. In this offense, he can be extremely good. He can be great. I don't know if he'll ever be the Justin Jefferson, for instance. Now, there are a couple things that I want to talk about when it comes to Metcalf. I feel like there are these myths concerning DK. And number one, I think, would just be he's inefficient. I think there's some belief from some people that he's become an inefficient player because he only averages 11 and a half yards per catch and he only catches about 64% of the targets that go his way. You put those two numbers together and, I mean, it's been better, right? Like in 2020, he was averaging 10 yards per target. Even his rookie year, he was averaging nine. This year, he was averaging less than seven and a half. But Amazon AWS has started tracking this stat called receptions over expected, which is basically how many catches was a player expected to catch over the course of a season, given their quarterbacks, their routes, the defense played against them, etc., taking all these factors into account. And it's basically tabulating who is going above and beyond expected in terms of making catches. And you can see DK Metcalf is behind only the cream of the crop, Justin Jefferson and Stephon Diggs. I think a lot of people would say those are the two best receivers in football. And Diggs, um, Diggs may, maybe he's not second, but he's almost certainly top five. And I think a lot of people would say Justin Jefferson is top one. So Metcalf is right there behind those two guys at number three. So that's pretty good company. Uh, second thing I want to address real quick here is the drops. Whenever you start talking about Metcalf and you have somebody out there who doesn't really like Metcalf or doesn't think he's that good, they start talking about the drops. All right, let's talk about that. How many passes did DK Metcalf actually drop this year? Keep in mind, he got targeted about 140 times. Depends on what site you use. But uh, let's start with uh, NBCSports.com. Let's uh, take a look here. Now, they have the league leaders in drops all at seven. And then they have a bunch at six. And then they have a bunch at five. DK Metcalf is among the receivers with five. So according to NBC Sports, Metcalf dropped five passes in 2022. Now, if we go over to fantasypros.com, they use clearly a very different formula. They've got a couple players here with 11 drops. They've got some with uh, nine, including the great Debo Samuel. They've got Tyreek Hill with eight, the great Tyreek Hill. Devontae Adams has seven. Where's uh, Metcalf here? Where's Metcalf? Oh, he's down here he's got six so dk metcalf depending on what site you use has either five drops or six drops on the season on 140 targets 141 actually if you want to be precise are you really going to dismiss a player because he drops one pass every month basically slightly more than once a month when he's out there in every game seems a little silly to me the way these people act you would think that Metcalf's dropping a pass every game you would think that he has like 15 or 20 drops sorry guys if you think DK Metcalf is some stone hands player who can't catch you're wrong 
I don't think you will find a single credible site that says he's got like 15 or 16 drops the way Terrell Owens had back in the day. It's just not the case. I'm sorry. And let's not forget, while we're here, DK Metcalf was our best player in the playoff game. That's got to count for something. So you put it all together, I have DK Metcalf at number 7 in the top 10 list of best Seahawks players in 2022.